Hallelujah! We hear this word in just about every Christian gathering we attend. Well, in this teaching, I aim to equip you with a correct understanding of the word hallelujah so that you can share it with those God has placed under your care. Let's get started. Welcome to Equipped. I'm Mario Escobedo. On this channel, I provide principles and insights to equip you to share the Bible effectively with those God has placed under your care. If this sounds helpful to you, well then consider subscribing and tapping the bell so that you always get the latest teaching. In this teaching, I want to equip you with a correct understanding of the word hallelujah. So to do this, we're going to look at hallelujah in its original language, Hebrew. And we're going to break down the three grammatical components in Hebrew that make up the word hallelujah. Let's take a look at the screen. So here's the word hallelujah written in Hebrew. Now remember that Hebrew is read from right to left. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some dividing lines to identify these three grammatical components in this word. Here's the first divider right here. Here's the second divider right here. Now the first component are these three letters right here. This is the first component. And these three letters are the verb halal. And this verb simply means to praise, to exalt, to extol, to lift up, all of those variants and synonyms of the word to praise. The second component is this vowel right here. Now in Hebrew, when this vowel is added to a verb, the verb becomes a plural imperative verb. What does that mean? Well, an imperative verb is a verb that is a command and the plural part of course means two or more people. So a plural imperative verb is a verb that is a command being issued to two or more people. So whenever you say hallelujah, technically you're telling two or more people praise. You're saying something like y'all better praise. It's not you, an individual praise, but y'all, all of you praise. It's plural. You're issuing a command or an invitation to a group of people to offer praise. Now, this command to praise is not a general instruction to praise just anything or anyone. Built into the word hallelujah is a very specific recipient of the praise, and that brings us to the third grammatical component of the word hallelujah in Hebrew. That third component is made up of these last two letters right here. Before I explain this third component, I'd like to let you know that I created a teaching of a sermon I preached on Acts chapter 1 verses 3 through 8. In this teaching, I provide historical, literary, theological and cultural information that provides a fresh perspective on Jesus's words, you will receive power once the Holy Spirit has come upon you. To access this free exclusive behind the scenes teaching, follow the link in the description of this video. Now back to our teaching. Now again, the third grammatical component of the word hallelujah is made up of these last two letters right here. These two letters are pronounced ya and they are the abbreviation for the proper name of the God of Israel, the divine name, Yahweh. Let me show you how that works. Down here, I've got the abbreviation Yah, as it appears in the word hallelujah, but I also have the full name written out right here. And so what you notice is that these first two letters are identical. The only two letters missing from the abbreviation are these two last letters right here. So you see how these two letters that appear in the word hallelujah are the abbreviation for the longer form of the divine name Yahweh. Now in the Bible, the abbreviation Yah is used in other places besides just the word hallelujah. This abbreviation appears in different places in the Bible, but primarily in the book of Psalms. So its use is not limited to the word hallelujah. Now let me give a brief side note regarding the divine name Yahweh. In Orthodox Jewish circles, this name is never pronounced. In those circles, it's the divine name that merits such reverence that it cannot even be pronounced. So when practitioners of Orthodox Judaism come to a place in their Bible that has the divine name Yahweh, they do not pronounce the word out loud. Instead, they say one of two things. They will either say Adonai, which is the Hebrew word for Lord, or they will say Hashem, which literally means the name. So let's review the three grammatical components that make up the word hallelujah in Hebrew. First, we've got the initial verb halal, which means to praise. Next, the suffix, 
which converts the verb halal to a plural imperative, y'all better praise, and finally, ya, which is the abbreviation for the divine name, Yahweh. When we put these three components together, what we have is a command to a group or a congregation to offer their praise to the one and only God of all the cosmos. What we're saying is everybody, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Now on a practical note, Private personal devotion and worship is both wonderful and necessary for our spiritual growth. But just as important is that we gather together as a body of believers to offer our highest praise to the Lord. Hallelujah! Indeed, the author of Hebrews wrote in chapter 10 verses 24 and 25, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. I think that one of the ways we encourage one another, as this scripture exhorts us to do, is by inviting or maybe even commanding one another to praise the Lord. Hallelujah! Now, I have a question for you. What are some other important biblical words we should explain to those God has placed under our care? Use the comments below to let me and the others who are watching this video know what you think. Remember, some of the best ideas and suggestions come from you, the community of the equipped. I pray this insight has equipped you to share the Bible effectively with those who God has placed under your care. Until next time, God bless.